Hello, this is Adam Wolf. I just wanted to follow up to a post on the uh, Facebook physical therapy post. It was about a swimmer, particularly, and uh, the conversation turns to how we assess thoracic motion for a swimmer. So first of all, uh, the swimmers that I've worked with, which has been a number of them at the collegiate and then triathlon level, uh, what I find typically is that uh, their thoracic spine, especially with people that have shoulder pain, their thoracic spine doesn't go through the correct motion that we want it to go through. And so what I said on, on the Facebook page was that uh, we talked about type 1 versus type 2 thoracic or spinal motions, in particular right now thoracic motion. And so uh, this, the thoracic spine can side bend and rotate in a number of different directions. If it side bends and rotates in the opposite direction, so if I side bend left, and I rotate right, that's considered in the osteopathic literature to be type uh, one thoracic motion or neutral mechanics of the thoracic spine. So side bending and rotating opposite of each other is considered type one mechanics of the spine. And that's what happens during gait, uh, which we can talk about a little bit uh, in another post if we need to. But uh, with the, so the thoracic spine can also side bend and rotate in the opposite or the same direction. So I can side bend left and rotate left. And that would be the osteopathic literature would call that non-neutral mechanics or type two motions. And so typically what I see when people are swimming, if you think about as they're coming through with a crawl into this position, getting their arm up, is that my side, my thoracic spine is side bent left. As soon as I bring my right hand up overhead, that pre-positions me left. So I'm side bent left and then I'm rotated right because when I'm in this position, I'm rotated right. So I'm side bent left and rotated right, which is what should occur with swimming. But a lot of times what I've found is people that have shoulder pain, they tend to go through type two motion in their thoracic spine. So they either side bend left and rotate left, which is gonna tweak out their shoulder, or most times what they do is they side bend right and rotate right, and then they're gonna impinge their shoulder. So working on that thoracic mobility becomes important. And then the question was, how do I assess thoracic spine upright? So I've got my assistant, uh, or my lovely assistant here, Jessica, who's gonna help me, and I'll show how I tend to check thoracic spine. It's, certainly uh, not objective or not uh, quantitative necessarily, we could make it, but I just look at it in terms of a quick down and dirty assessment. So what I do is I have her stand with her feet shoulder width apart or about you know uh, even part, just be consistent with it. I'm gonna have her bring her right hand up overhead and as soon as she does that, uh, I side bent her left in her spine. So we're gonna take a step back so they can see it. In the hand. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach her with her hand up overhead, she's gonna take her left hand and rotate left and she's gonna take her left hand and rotate right behind and I'm gonna want her pelvis to go and I'm gonna to wanna to see how far she can go in each direction. So I'm just gonna teach her how to do the motion first. I'm gonna make sure she can go through those motions. A lot of times what you'll see is they won't go from their hips, rather they just move from their arms. So I want it to come from below. And then what I'm gonna do and where the assessment comes in is I'm gonna hold Jessica's hand right here. And her hand, if you can't see on the camera, is facing sort of in neutral here, it's facing forward. What I'm doing is I'm gripping right here and what I'm assessing is she goes ahead and rotates her hand. Right now, when she's here, she's side bent left and rotated right. And when she comes with her left hand, rotates it left. That's side bent left and rotated left. So that's type two motion. The other way is type one. And what I'm looking for is when I start to feel a bailout in her overhead hand, when I start to feel resistance and when I personally have to hold on tighter to keep her hand facing forward because as she comes with her left hand behind her here, all of this tissue starts to be taken up as a reaction to the rotation below. At a certain points, she's not gonna be able to have enough tissue extensibility, and so her wrist is gonna to wanna to start to twist in when she's at this point here. When she comes around that way into type two, at a certain point, all this tissue is gonna be taken up and her wrist is gonna to wanna to sort of twist out as that happens. So all I'm doing is objectively looking one side to the other. Go ahead and go through that motion. Yeah, so type two type one, and when we're looking with her right hand above, so uh, she's more limited in type two, so that's tighter right into here is where she feels the bind versus the other side. And then I'm gonna compare it to the other side. By the way, I tend to stand 45 degrees off of her, not to the side and not right behind, because this hand, her rotating hand is gonna smack you otherwise. So now I've got her here, go ahead, take your hand. Yep, so type two or type one, and go, oh, she's bumping in, so let's move over. Yep, go ahead and type two, type two right there type one, and she's more limited in type two both directions, but she's more limited in type two with this vector. I think about four vectors. I can go one, two, or I could go 
three, four, and that's just with her spine in neutral, not flexed or extended. And so of that, she's more limited in left rotation total because when her right hand's up and she rotates her left hand left, so type two, she's more limited here. But also when her left hand comes up and she rotates this way, her right hand rotates, that's type one, she's also limited going to the left. So for me, this is more of a rotation component issue with Jessica, knowing her a little bit, that actually makes a little sense. So. That's how I tend to assess it. If I want to take the hips out of it a little, I can have her sit down. I personally like to get the hips involved. I can get more specific as I want. That's just sort of the general assessment and I can put my hands on specific parts and sort of add some counter forces as I want through their spine. So hopefully that's for some discussion. Thanks so much.